Welcome everybody to Is Your Museum a Hybrid Space webinar. This is part of the Manifesto um, for Museum Actions NPR webinar series. And this will be the final episode of this series. There will be more coming soon in September. And uh, yes, before we start, I'd just like to welcome everybody to make the time to join, to listen to something that we think is quite innovative. Uh, talk about museums in hundred spaces. So if you want to introduce yourself and where you're connecting from and where do you work for, that would be um, amazing. And um, I like to, um, to, to welcome also, um, we are three of us um, hosting this panel and I am Cecilia Martin. I will be your host. I'm a brand strategist for culture so I work internationally helping museums and cultural institutions uh, to connect to the 21st century. I help develop brand strategies with a very strong focus on technology because I'm very interested to find new ways to connect with culture and new ways to engage new audiences. So today, webinar is completely on topic. And I have the pleasure to have with me um, Christiana Casacu. And Christiana Casacu is the program engagement specialist for the Leonardo, for Leonardo, which is um, the International Society for Arts and Science and Technology. She's also a researcher, a curator, and a producer. And her research with the Plymouth University is currently funded by the UK Arts and Humanities uh, Research Council and is exploring transdisciplinary curatorial models and spatial trajectories within the arts and science discourse. So hold on because she's coming very soon. And we have as well Bell Lavrati. Uh, Bell, she's a strategist and a designer, and she's helping organizations to bring about change and uh, make an impact through um, branding and also through um, facilitation, but she also helps people uh, to define their identity and to find their voice and define their voice. And he's based in Zurich, but working internationally. And she's bringing the dynamic element to the webinar. So we have a chance to interact and work together. So I just wanted to introduce the manifesto series. The manifesto series came out out of um, a workshop that we did last year in Prague when the new definition of museum was being voted. And uh, we had a conference at NPR that was about the power of museums to inspire hope, to engage in conversations, and most importantly, to take action. Because we think that we are defined by the actions that uh, we take. So we gave everybody the opportunity to work in a manifesto for museum actions and to give ourselves, I come NPR members working with communication, to be change makers. And we had a very interesting session in which we work with um, participants and delegates from all over the world in defining this manifesto. And then we shared, discussed, and uh, we, we took the new museum definition and all the key areas and elements, as you know, accessibility, diversity, sustainability, ethnic eth and reflection, Farther, and we, we decided which areas we wanted to focus on, and we identified the barriers that were blocking us, and we were going to define the actions that we wanted to take. And the result came out in four blocks, museums for enjoyment actions, inclusivity, sustainability, and accessibility. And on the base of this result, we have put together a series of webinars that are tackling these subjects, and we're going to continue as we say. So this is the Manifesto for Museum Action. And before we move into the presentation, I'd like to give the word to Bill to give us a little bit of an insight of housekeeping. Thank you, Cecilia. So being this a webinar, I will just ask you all to mute yourselves during the presentations so we can hear everybody very nice and clear. I'll as also talk about this meeting is being recorded or the session is being recorded. You are absolutely um, welcome to leave your camera on or off as you please. Um, you're welcome. And please, because we're gonna be expecting a high number of participants, so use if we cannot like have open conversations all the time. So please use the chat as a tool 
put there your questions, your comments, please share as much as you want and you can there. And if you can, please grab pen, pen and paper. If you have something close to you, uh, this, our invitation is for you to do an active listening today. So really to go through the presentation uh, from Christiana, thinking, you know, what is new to me? How do I feel this? Uh, how I'm getting this information? If you go to the next please, slide. So we all understand that we are all in a journey towards um, hybrid spaces. So we can be right at the beginning, like I want, and I'm interested about this, I'm not doing this at the moment, I can be experimenting. So right now you're gonna see popping up a poll. We want it to be, a, bring some interactive elements here. If you can please answer in that poll and select where you are today on the journey to a hybrid space. So it can be that we're not there yet, but willing to work towards that. We have done some experiments. I will, I'll let you go through the questions. So all you need to do is click on the button and we're gonna have, have, have like a half minute more or less to see the results coming in. And then we publish here. It's just a way for us to feel the heat on the, on the room and understand where the audience is uh, on this journey. Let's see some results still coming in. And I think we can, at least I think we can close it now. It's interesting to see like how different people are in different stages. With that in mind, please, I again invite you to go through the presentation with uh, a couple of questions in mind. So what is new to me? Any aha, any insight that comes to your mind and what you're taking away from this? So really do an active listening. So we can share the results here. Let's see what it is. This is out of interest. So we see that, you know, there's a difference in the map and there's a little bit of everywhere. And now I'm going to invite Christiana to take the stage and to introduce her to the topic. Welcome, Christiana. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and the, the great work with the manifesto. I would also like to thank uh, ICOM and PR for hosting this webinar. And uh, I would like to start by sharing my screen. Yes, yeah, so uh, today actually I'm going to speak about uh, hybrid spaces and introduce you into like a multidisciplinary approach to experimental culture. As uh, I am a researcher at the IDAT, so IDAT, I initially would like to let you know what is IDAT. It's actually an open research lab for, for playful experimentation with creative technologies. In our lab, we work with uh, cultural computation audience behaviors, environments, and artificial intelligence. Uh, small, far away, big, small data, analytics, visualization, and sonification of data. Uh, behavior, behaviorables and uh, futurables, uh, internet of things, remote sensors, robotics, uh, props, and uh, wearables, interactive and immersive environments, uh, new experiences and enhanced uh, physical, augmented, and virtual spaces, uh, lucid systems, playful subversion, real-time social gaming, and uh, playful uh, soft uh, hardware. Uh, but what is hybrid space? So the hybrid space is actually a space in between the actual the defined space and the virtual space. Uh, it allows us to explore like uh, research experience and uh, multiple network dimension of spaces. It uses technologies as, such as augmented reality, virtual reality, and embraces information to enhance the physical space around us. Uh, during COVID-19, we saw several emerging models and formats emerging uh, in both like museums and cultural organizations. And today we're going to go through like some of them. And I would like to pose some questions on how we can achieve like these models in the future. Uh, by experimenting with different formats, 
We can reinvent the museums and motivate higher participation and attract wider audiences globally. And we can explore the role of current and emerging technology to reflect upon the professional use of hybrid space and experimental practice in the museum content and context. But hybrid spaces are not only like, you know, spaces within like a phys physical space. We can think of space in a more conceptual way. So hybridity also like sits in the context of crossing boundaries and disciplinary boundaries. And now I would like to go through like some uh, ideas about uh, art and science. Uh, the, my main research actually is connected with like art and science discourse and uh, mainly like about some historical milestones and also how this is connected uh, throughout organizations. So starting from the Renaissance era, like uh, during like uh, Leonardo da Vinci, we had this model of the Italian polymath where like it was the individual, individual genius and uh, disciplines coexisting. Uh, moving uh, to the 1959, the C.P. Snow like, read the lecture, which is very known at the University of Cambridge. He divided the intellectual life between two cultures, the sciences and the humanities. Then we moved into like the third culture, which is merging the boundaries of art, science, and technology, in which these three disciplines, they no longer function separately. And now we're towards like complex networks of knowledge, or even actually new digital renaissance. According to Wilson, there are different differences between art and science. So art, like six aesthetic response, is more idiosyncratic, is based on emotion and intuition, uh, it relies on visual or sonic communication and other forms of communicating, is evocative, metaphorical, values break with tradition, while science seeks knowledge and understanding, reason is normative, uh, is based on narrative text communication, is explanatory, and uh, values systematic building on uh, tradition and ad adherence to standards. However, like uh, having mentioned the differences, there's also many similarities between the two. And this is even actually a hybrid space between the art and science discourse, which are like uh, value the careful observation of their environments to gather information through the senses. They value creativity. They propose to introduce change, innovation, and improvement. Uh, they use abstract models to understand the world. They aspire to create works that have universal relevance. And uh, we also come across like different uh, disciplinary terms, uh, such as like intradisciplinary, multidisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary. Uh, so this led me to research what actually is the difference between all those terms and how we put them into practice. So interdisciplinary is like working within one sim single discipline. Cross-disciplinary is viewing one discipline from the perspective of the other. Uh, multidisciplinary is uh, different disciplines working together. It's drawing on their disciplinary knowledge. Interdisciplinary is about integrating knowledge and methods from different disciplines, synthesis of approaches. And transdisciplinary is creating a unity of intellectual frameworks beyond disciplinary perspectives. However, like uh, disciplines have different languages. So sometimes even in collaborations between art, science and between different disciplines, we need like further explanation and translation. But in all disciplines, space is a represent representational strategy. So from established cultural institutions to research and laboratories, we have seen different like best practices and institutions implementing like those practices such as ZKM, which is the Center for Media Arts in Germany. Uh, it was uh, established back in 1989 and is a unique cultural institution worldwide that plays, plays that expands original tasks of the museum and sometimes is even called the electronic or digital Bauhaus. Uh, they work across like different uh, media and they combine research and production, exhibitions and performances, collections and archives, mediation and events. Uh, the ZKM plus other organizations, they run like a series of residencies, uh, which is a very interesting context in, in the museum sector because uh, you can create like space and time for research, collaboration and creation. The model can vary. It can be short term or long term. It can be curated or open ended. Uh, it can be like through an open call or by invitation, a reward, commission or even a private sponsorship. And uh, the context can vary like from a scientific lab and research centers, R&D in industry, tech companies, uh, web residencies, universities, institutional and other spaces. So ZKM have been running a web residency 
for like three years in uh, collaboration with Academic Law Solitude uh, in like different thematic uh, approaches such as uh, an AI summer, a ghosted call, fractal horses, uh, engineering care call, uh, and uh, another very known like historic uh, residency and lab is actually the Art and Tech Lab at LACMA in uh, Los Angeles. So like they support experiments in design, creative entrepreneurship, adventures in art and industry, collaboration and interdisciplinary dialogue. Uh, the program actually started like uh, back in the 1967, so it was very pioneering to 1971, and uh, paired the artists with corporations in the areas of aerospace, scientific research and entertainment. Um, it has been actually the art and tech lab, it has been inspired by the spirit of the original program, which took place back in the 1967, and uh, supports like artist experiments with emerging technology. And uh, it has been host it has been hosting like international artists uh, through like their lab at uh, LACMA. Um, then there's like the Art and Science Museum in Singapore, where actually is a place where you can imagine the future. And uh, recently they have created like a VR gallery within the museum uh, that uh, celebrates curiosity, innovation, and experimentation through cutting edge virtual reality artworks. Uh, they build collaborations with uh, very known like artists, scientists, museums, and film festivals, and they push the boundaries of reality and discovering the unexplored. Uh, another very known like museum that have been pioneering like uh, since the 2008 is the Streaming Museum in New York, that they bring a world view into focus through the arts and uh, its interconnections to contemporary international affairs and cultures, the sciences, technology, and the future. Uh, they use creative digital technologies to produce exhibitions and present them on screens in public spaces. And uh, since 2008, they have reached the millions of uh, seven continents in public spaces at cultural and commercial centers. The Mantriff, which is like an art and science museum in uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, is closely associated with the electronic arts degree at the University of uh, uh, Buenos Aires. And uh, they is, is hosted at the Technopolis uh, Science and Technology Park. And at the same time, they produce like different exhibitions. And recently, they have partnered with the Neuroscience Laboratory of the Torquato detail like University of Artificial Intelligence and uh, Neuroscience, as well as uh, incorporating like new technologies like an app where you can uh, have a new immersive 360 experience of the museum. Uh, at the same time, like Ars Electronica, again, like one of the pioneering museums in the, in the sector, they have a very futuristic approach. You can experience artificial intelligence thinking, uh, new technologies, how like uh, we can train self-driving cars, program robots, 3D printing, and um, they have a very interesting future lab, it's called, that uh, is a is a laboratory and atelier for future systems. And they focus on different research areas, such as art thinking, artificial collectives, co-immersive spaces, creative intelligence, future narratives, origami robotics, poetic systems, symbiotic creativity, and tangible link. And what they do actually, they, they first of all, they build collaborations with industry, but secondly, the outcomes of this research, they're exhibited in the museum, so it's the Museum of Future. They have a specific uh, space dedicated at the Ars Electronica Center where you can see all the research outcomes uh, through like this international team, but they work along uh, architecture, biology, chemistry, graphics, informatics, art, media design, media technology, music, physics, sociology, and telematics. And uh, having said that, you know, like it looks like that uh, in the future we're going to co-create with technology. What does this mean? Uh, we can't really ignore the technological impact of the fourth industrial revolution. So AI is one of the key technologies transforming the economy, society, and the labor market. And we see like upcoming trends on the Internet of Things, blockchain, robotics, augmented and virtual reality, big data, 3D and 4D printing. And uh, all these technologies, they're defining ourselves. 
like all the revolutions, you know, there are challenges and opportunities, uncertainties and certainties. Uh, but how do these actually changes affect the museum practices? Do they shift ownership? Are they reshaping access? Will open AI provide access to vast amount of knowledge through museums? Are we going to experience museums in the metaverse? Does AR and VR technology reform the way museums and exhibits are displayed? So an example like the Natural History Museum in the UK, they just like uh, launched a multi-year partnership with uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, where they're going to transform and accelerate scientific research with goals to create a digital twin for UK biodiversity uh, by creating a data platform, which is going to be open to uh, scientists of the museum, but also to the wider audiences uh, for the discovery of solutions to the planetary emergency. Also, like they have been using the Amazon's voice assistant, and users of Alexa will now be given answers to questions about natural history informed by the museum's research and information on oceans, marine life, dinosaurs, environment, and climate change. Another very interesting uh, project is called uh, the, is the Gift App. Uh, which is about gifting museum experiences. It was designed uh, before COVID uh, from Blast Theory. It's a very known collective that they have been working with the Mixed Reality Lab at the University of Nottingham for a long time. So they have been pioneering the hybrid space domain uh, with also performances and other uh, projects that, that they challenge like uh, politics, politics of participation. Uh, so the gift app is a smartphone or a tablet-based experience, and actually it advises uh, the museum visitors to turn the visit into a gift. So you can actually send like a digital gift to another person that you love or you care. So in a way it's becoming like a sharing experience. And this project has been tested in several museums for uh, since like uh, 2017 until the end of 2019. And uh, finally, I'm going to go through like uh, experimental engagement. Uh, so like all these technologies, uh, they enhance our experience through digital practice. And according to a digital um, agency, Calvium, uh, all these actually environments, digital environments, they're becoming part of the visitor experience, meaning like that we're going to have interaction through like digital sensory tools, participation through like crowdsourced uh, data, engagement, uh, through like virtual galleries, inclusion through accessible venues, communication through social networks, and uh, engagement through location-based uh, storytelling. Uh, so there's like new emerging uh, forms of communication, like synchronous and asynchronous, as well like co-presence, like an intentional and intentional. And uh, ways of engaging and viewing art such as like AR and uh, mixed reality, uh, VR headset in an exhibition setting, VR actually headset at home, and uh, screen-based. Like, so we're now exposed to like so many social VR and other applications through like our computers. And uh, very interesting like uh, format that I attended during COVID it was uh, an exhibition organized by ZKM. It's called the uh, Critical Zones. Uh, curated by Bruno Latour. And what was very interesting, it was one of the first uh, virtual tours in an exhibition with like uh, the curator. Uh, so this is like also like new formats that emerged like during COVID and apparently many museums have adopted like over the last years. And uh, a project that happened uh, last uh, week, it was the Experimental Museum, which is a traveling hybrid conversation of series uh, like fostering an exchange of ideas between innovative museums across Switzerland, the US and the world. Uh, with a focus on the interactive museum environments and uh, novel interfaces between museums and the cities. And uh, it was uh, streamed live from uh, the MIT Museum in Cambridge, uh, along with the EPFL pavilions and the House of Electronic Arts, and uh, presented like recent experiments in museum practice to inspire new thinking on the role of museums in today's and tomorrow's world. Uh, there's more series coming up, so there's going to be more events uh, if you wish to attend. And uh, finally, actually, I would like to mention a project that I took part uh, this uh, few months ago. It's called like the Mindsets and Missions for Museums and Science Centers of the Future. So this was actually a program, like a learning program, leading to a grant application through like uh, the Museums Association uh, in collaboration with the Association for Science and Discovery Centers. 
uh, UK research and innovation, the liminal space, and uh, the whole idea is was actually connecting like organizations with change makers and uh, public engagement from research to think about new ways of like communicating uh, knowledge, research and innovation. It's about using the concept of like future citizens and how we envision the museums in the future and how actually the future societies will build up on like this uh, uh, element. Um, and uh, part of our university, actually, we have like two different labs, which is the digital fabrication of the immersive media laboratories. And we adopt like a similar model, like on how we work within academia and the cultural sector. Uh, so through like our students that they are from the BA Digital Media Design, Game Arts and Design, Virtual Reality Design, and uh, MA students from the Experience Design, uh, building collaborations with uh, the market uh, whole immersive dome uh, is actually like a 360 dome inspired by SAT in Montreal. And uh, also like we have been uh, dealing with a lot of collaborations with observatories and uh, science centers, uh, which uh, in a way they makes us think actually on a way like how the museums are defined and how where we are going in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christiana. And thank you very much, yeah, everybody is having the, the platform. And I love this new button of the, I'm not so new, but I'm the button. Uh, thank you very much for that. So, so interesting. Also, it's always nice to see like, how much we have. Uh, one thing that we wanted to do in this webinar is to be a little bit more interactive. So we're going to invite you now to go into pairs and to, think about or just discuss the three questions that we had before. So we're gonna put the prompt out for you, but basically I wanted to give you a chance to just exchange your thoughts on the presentation with some peers. So we're gonna be in, in, in pairs. And the questions are, what is new for me? What, do, what was new to me? Um, were there any aha moments, anything that called your attention? And what am I taking away from the session? So we're going to split you and we're going to assign you to different groups and we're going to give like two minutes. It's a very short exercise, but it's like roughly two minutes each. So you have time to just exchange some thoughts and you'll get the, the flow going. And then we're going to come back. So we give an announce when two minutes is over, then we see, switch over. So who's talking first, then now it's listening. Uh, and then we come back to the group session. Is that okay for everyone? Great. So Louise, you can take us away on the, on the rooms. Lovely. I love to see how people come back with a smile. This is great. Mm -hmm. so, while you we were away, we were talking here that actually we are we were expecting 60 people to be in this room. So it would be like super, super big. Um, Sam will catch up the, with the recording later. What I would like to then invite you, we're going to take the opportunity to actually give the voice to you and hear a little bit if you want to share like how it was the experience of sharing in in pair, in, in, in peers. And in here, <laughs> and what did you discover? So, do I have any volunteer? You can just unmute yourself, like we have. We don't have the button here. James, do you want to go for it? Yeah, I happen to know you, so <laughs> <laughs> we say that this is not volunteer. This is volunteer. <laughs> yeah. Well well, our, I mean, our conversation, it's interesting, my conversation partner is actually doing, is Anna here, who's doing research on this subject. So I was wow, amazing. pestering her with a series of questions about the success rate of hybrid spaces and the sustainability and like how they, how they sort of come in and out of being. Um, and we immediately got into kind of institutional structure and whether it, you know, and, and whether it's supported via sort of patronage or has a university supporting it um, and kind of what those necess what the necessary elements are. So, um, you know, f f you know, what does it take for this to be viable and successful long term? Um, mm. so Anna should kind of chime in here to sort of fill in the answer, the, the interesting sort of perspective. 
Yeah. Well, you are doing so well on your own. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically, I'm doing my MA thesis on Science Gallery, uh, which is a network of uh, univers uh, university-based uh, galleries that deal with science and art. Um, they started out in 2008 in Dublin, and now they've spread, spread globally. If I remember well, they have nine locations at the moment. And they're all connected to different universities, so they have access to research, like fresh research and super innovative research. But that also that means they are susceptible to the politics of the university they are connected to. And so, yeah, that's what my research is about, basically. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, the first one, though, like in Dublin, it was not connected with the universities. It was the international network that is so, more connected with uh, partnerships and uh, universities. Yeah. So the network is international, but the single locations are connected to a single university. For example, the Dublin location was connected to Trinity College. The uh, London location is uh, connected to uh, King's College. King's College. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I know. I know their model very well. <laughs> well, science and art collide. Yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> totally. Do you think that this collision is going to happen maybe to all kinds of museums and not the art and science museums? Is this the? Is that where we're heading? I think so, in a certain way. I mean that if we want to stay relevant, you have to connect to people in a way that they want to be connected with. I mean, they, you have to present them with something that they are already talking about or they are willing to talk about. So mm -hmm. for example, if you want to do something about climate change, you can do that in an art museum as well. For example, there are so many conversation about uh, whether conservation of artifacts uh, can, can be made sustainable for just, that's just an example. Of course, if you are a science museum, you can delve a little bit more on the science behind the, you know, climate change. That depends on what's your focus. But the idea of having a place where the science and science that meant in a very broad way, not just the hard science, but like, you know, you have social sciences and all the other kind of academia can talk to hmm. the public. I think that museums could be a very interesting place where this uh, collision can happen. Mm -hmm. that's very interesting I wonder what you know you think and anyone really in, in this um, webinar about the fact that museums are becoming more places of wonder so a place to also you know bring science and technology and art together um, to explore and to have a more experimental culture rather than presented something that maybe it's is banalized it's, the, it's kind of a change of a mindset, right? Yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Christiane, if you want to elaborate on that. Yes, I think like there are different uh, approaches, like depending on the museum uh, content and context. So like an example, like uh, science uh, centers, they're very interested in like in wonder spaces and uh, engaging more with technology because also they see it as uh, science communication and also like they want to engage with uh, intergenerational audiences. So like uh, they have also a different focus. When actually contemporary art museums usually uh, there are collaborations taking place between artists and scientists, but uh, usually the priority or like the representation is more on the art and how art is displayed uh, within a museum. Uh, however, even actually art museums, they have been uh, integrating like new approaches. So an example like the Bozar Lab in uh, Brussels, it is like an art and tech and uh, science uh, lab within a very known institution. So there are like different models and institutions that they integrate like this wonder space. Uh, even I think like in Buenos Aires, like there's a lab in the new museum. So, so they like these kind of uh, labs also in a sense for uh, public engagement and education. So they do help like to run like educational programs too. And it's also like changing the way we experience museums. So uh, post COVID, there are changes. 
And the fourth uh, industrial revolution is going to bring more change. So museums have to adopt, you know, they have to uh, redefine themselves. We can't really like be uh, or follow like the old models uh, for, for long. It might take like longer or it takes some time to adopt. But uh, I think things are going to happen. And most museums, actually, they are going to use like even technologies in a, in a wonder mode of uh, collaboration and uh, public engagement. They have already actually been working towards different formats, uh, especially during COVID and post-COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder, thank you, if anyone from um, the participants and like to share more of their discussions they were having, what was the, the biggest realizations of the things that were more challenging uh, from these subjects? Um, while I was discussing with Deborah, um, I just thought of a question and I just asked her, like we were discussing about it, that what if in the Anyways, the fourth industrial revolution is coming up. There will be technology accessible to everyone, like AI and uh, VR. So museums are going to adopt those things. But if the technology is already accessible to the people, then why, like, will people really go to the museums to experience that experience which the museums are providing, which they can access already by sitting at home? Because you know it's anyways AI and VR. Mm -hmm. So I was just like I just had a question that if AI and VR will be accessible like literally like mobile phones, then will there be a need or what can be the specific thing that museums can provide and those technologies can't by sitting at home or anywhere across the globe. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important question, which I think what really highlights is the definition of a space and the role of a space. What is a space? Because we call this talk hybrid space, but it's a space. What is a space? Is that the physical? Do we, you know, where do we exist? And uh, I think that's a very, you know, challenging question. Um, probably there is an element of physicality of being together that you know this narrative of spaces will still bring but um but equally you could experience that from anywhere in the world i don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that uh, subject matter or uh christiana if you have you know in your research come across that question the question of yes of i mean like uh, virtual museums they they have actually started operating and uh, we are able even google actually they have digitized like uh, heritage uh, for a long time now but uh, i think like it opens a question of globalization that we can experience actually museums that we're not able uh, to be there like uh, in person but at the same time i don't think that the physical presence is going to eliminate so i think we're going to have like this hybrid mode of experiencing whether this is like being in a physical space as i mentioned in my presentation at home and experiencing those uh, museums and content or whether actually going to a physical museum and experiencing a VR. So they're both hybrid experiences, but from different perspectives. On the one, actually, you are staying at home, but you still have the same hybrid experience, if, even actually through social VR. I'm not sure whether you have uh, experimented with that. So it's uh, you have it's just like about different uh, modes of experiences. But uh, definitely, I think the fact that uh, museums open up uh, their content is going to democratize knowledge. And it's going to open like boundaries, even being here in this space, in the Zoom space now discussing these uh, matters, it would have been possible like a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Deborah, uh, we can hear you, you're muted. You need to unmute your beautiful yeah. voice. Thank As you. a matter of perspective, um, I, I'm an older person in the room, I hear. <laughs> I remember when we didn't have such things as websites for the web or computers, actually. And I remember we were had our website up and running in the in, during the Clinton administration. We, we were required at National Gallery of Art to have websites by a certain date, you know, um, or else you would not get your federal funding. Um, but uh, and then we came along. But oh my God, how do we get our collection on the website? We have to digitize everything, and 
our deputy director, who um, is no longer with us, so I can talk about. It. But he was all he was against it. He said, "We can't digitize the collection. If we make the collection, if we make all of our art available online, they won't come to see it." So that hasn't happened. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. online. The National Gallery became one of the leaders in digitizing its collection. Um, and, um, and people are still coming to the National Gallery of Art. So, um, but I think these are all still valid questions. Um, we have to constantly expand what museums can offer um, that other places can't offer. And so we can say, hey, we're offering this great technology. Come and experience, you know, this time, this time and this period in history or experience the future or whatever, but what else do we give you? What else do we help you experience, understand, be a part of that's different from what visitors will get elsewhere? So I think that's, a, and that's unique to, it could be unique to each museum, you know, as well. Um, so it challenges us just like we were challenged before. Um, so, just, just a thought. I mean, this has happened before, <laughs> and we managed yeah. to, right? <laughs> Absolutely, embracing constant change, and um, I, I'm, I think that's a very important point. And I think also raises the question whether, when we think about the future, and some of these museums and galleries that um, uh, Christiana shared with us in the subject matter, they talk about the future. Now, wonder if the future is already here. And what is what is the future? Because you know, as you know, the closer you get, the farther it expands. So I think perhaps museums are also an accessible way to explore the future. Or some technologies that normally sit in a lab somewhere and people don't have access to, or the or the technology that drives our lives and that we can't see and visualize. So it's an opportunity to get uh, closer. Um, it's, it's, Mina, does anyone have any questions? Sorry? Yeah, Josefina um, has, has raised her hand. Hi, everybody. Josefina. Hi, Josefina. Okay. Yes. Hi, everybody. And uh, um, just uh, thinking from the side of uh, the design and architecture point of view, um, probably what is happening in the museum is happening in other, in other context. It, it, it's, it's happening at university. Is happening in our uh, uh, workplace. So how we engage people, how we bring people into buildings, how we, we bring them to experience physically any kind of experience that is working, leisure, whatever. So probably the, the discussion about each of these uh, places, so in this case about the museum, should uh, be uh, seen in the context of the overall, overall picture. What is uh, the, the moment in which I leave my house to reach my workplace? What is the time in between leaving my house to reach uh, the museum? So how all the structure around, how architecture is evolving around this uh, happening, encouraging, because of how many barriers I have to face before to arrive to my workplace, uh, to the museum. So I think is uh, again, is a uh, things that cannot be addressed by the side of looking at the museum. It's about, uh, reimagining a new way or, or not a new way just to to, to see that the, the the question the problem from the point of view of all, all the design discipline architecture design communication so even uh, working on all the liminal space all the threshold all the the space that brings us from working to have an experience uh, an, an aesthetic experience from working to go home so what's happening is uh, i'm encouraged to do that or I'm, I'm discouraged because it's uh, too much effort i prefer to put my headphone on and uh, so i think uh, each of us uh, in our discipline should look at a way to to create criteria to to create this narrative to potential this narrative because i made we are made we are physically artifact we need physicality but uh, is uh, obvious that the generation my children your children they are going to have an, an other uh, different way to approach this physicality because they have a different experience they they don't have uh, our cognitive background so we process information in a way they don't process they don't read they don't have any artifact so and even if uh, so it's, it's really the cognitive process is different. 
but so it's not, it cannot be related just to museum, it must relate to the way we shape day life in a city, in a place. So I still think that there's a lot of responsibility in architecture field mm -hmm. and uh, of course in science, but there is lots in design field, in, in the time thinking and so going on. Yeah. That is really interesting. It's really, really oh. interesting. We are in a moment very interesting because uh, lots of things they are changing and uh, we are there and we can act on, on them. Mm. Um, Giuseppina, I'm curious because you work at university and you teach uh, design, MA and design. And uh, is this a subject that is being now addressed at, uh, with the students? Is the designing spaces for hybrid spaces? Is this on the curriculum? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is why today I invited a number of them, a number of the students saying, guys, look at the same topics we are trying really here to see from different points of view. In particular, in my course, we, wrote, we talk a lot about neuroscience, Neuro, neuroscience applied to architecture, to the design of a space. So the aspect of uh, how we process the information and how we access them and we experience them is, is, is really, really crucial. So yes, we are we are trying to see okay. how to yeah. embrace this new concept of a space, if we can call it a still a space. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. I don't know if anyone has any um questions. Um Anybody from the audience and any other remarks? Um, yes, Vera. Just to bring this around to marketing and public relations. <laughs> um, so the challenge for us as marketing people, brand managers, communicators, fundraisers even, or membership people, um, how, we have to stay on top of explaining this to all of our audiences, right? Communicating this so that they're not put off by it you know we want to we want to what is gen a is the latest one james i don't know gen yeah. a <laughs> from from baby boomers to gen a we still want all of them in our museum and we want them to feel welcome at all the different levels of their ability to participate so how do we as communicators marketers membership directors how do we make them feel that they understand it that they're not it used to be you were intimidated by the architecture, it was so grandiose sometimes that people were afraid to enter museums because I don't have enough education, I don't understand anything. Are we going to have the same problem now? Who you know, people? I I don't I don't do technology. I'm not comfortable with it. You know, so how do we communicate outside the museum that come on in? You know, participate, be a part of this. How it benefits them? You know, right? That's our challenge. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. in line with that, Nancy also asked a really critical question. It's like, how do we compete as institutions with the commercially driven technology that is going to be made readily available in people's living rooms? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you encountered this problem already with every technological evolution and where the museum sometimes tries to compete head on and can't. And other times is able to bring something that never actually gets to the to the to the living room, that has something to do with curatorial or uh, I don't know some higher level of intent that isn't just attention or or uh, you know occupying people's uh, you know wallet. So so what is that, and how do we differentiate from these things that are going to be driven? by economic factors faster than museums in many instances are able to react. Hmm. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so during like uh, the this mindset and missions program, it was very interesting because we were like a cohort of different people and we were discussing those things. And uh, we were actually come up came up with strategies where we have to take the museum outside the defined space which means coming up with strategies on how we can engage and uh, also like communicate what is the museum outside the museum. Because as Deborah said, like when uh, the audience, they have like this kind of uh, fear sometimes about education, about technology, about the walls of the museum. So the whole idea was how can we actually take this concept in other spaces? 
So there's only, it's not really only about hybrid spaces, it's about other spaces and how we can think of these spaces uh, more like creatively and conceptually. Now, in terms of the industry, it's true that it's, ve it's very actually, uh, museums are slower, they work in a different model, there's no profit usually, so they have different models, but uh, in Europe at least, there are many models and mainly through like the European Union uh, that they have been collaborating. And there's more synergies the last years, which it was not happening uh, like uh, they say they go. So I think like the Smithsonian as well, they have lots of examples that they work with uh, tech companies and industry, but they just work on a project basis. Or like even Google, they digitize collections, but they, they do it up to a certain level. For them, it's not, of course, like profitable to work with museums exclusively. So I mm -hmm. think... I think this connection works more like a, either on a sponsorship or like a project basis. Yeah, but I think we should also think about and going back to what Deborah was saying of how to connect with new audiences, not to embrace technology only as how we facilitate experiences or the subject matter, but also maybe going back to the living room question of Nancy to embrace it as a way to communicate. We just recently did a project for the Philharmonie Luxembourg and we uh, made the logo uh, response to music with uh, creative coding. So technology became part of the communication. Mm -hmm. How can we do this more and more? And that's the challenge for us as part of ICOM NPR. And most of us, some of us are involved in branding strategies and way to communicate in. I believe we can be more creative. We can embrace the technology as a mean to communicate and make it more dynamic, not just the end product of what you're going to see, but actually be part of the message in a way. Mm. It's a medium, it's a medium for communication. So, I mean, uh, we're not going to like uh, do the next uh, Eureka moment as museums, but at the same time, you can use technology as a, me a mediation like for different programs and communication and uh, engaging with wider audiences even globally now. Hmm. It's always very often people ask the question, is the how or is the why? And I think that, you know, you're entitled to say is the how, but depending on the circumstance can be part of the why too. Although we don't want to do technology for technology is a mediator or an enabler, but it can be the how and the why as well. Yeah. Deborah. Um, so if you've been, to, if you go to Medellin, Colombia, if you can, and go to Parque Explora, um, because they start in the community, and that's where a lot of their concepts and their projects start, not in the museum, but in the community, when they start thinking of, um, about the community, they ask the community to participate, and they, so they actually have, for instance, young people who never left their neighborhoods, but through a mapping exercise, um, and they used some very simple technology at the time, but they've now done they were able to map their neighborhoods, but realize there are all these other neighborhoods around them, and they need to explore the other neighborhoods. And this was all displayed at the museum. Another thing they've been, been involved in was music, the science of making music. And they're using technology that way and it's displayed in the museum, but they're using it out in the community. You know, and I'm, I'm not doing it justice, but sometimes if, you're, if the museum's ideas or concepts start in the community, if we're actually listening to our communities, to our audiences as, you know, Let's listen to them. What I, and they have talents and skills and ideas, questions um, that can be married, you know, with mm -hmm. um, our curators, our specialists, at the, whatever, at the museums and the universities that we're connected to. Maybe that's an answer, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of, um, so it's not, it's the technology, but we're all a part of it. We're all part of the conceiving what, and they help with the technology. Some of these young people, actually took over one part of the project and managed the, the technology actually. So um, we can't be afraid to let go. I think museums and curators sometimes are afraid to let go. Um, and from the very beginning, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's a true hybrid experience, I suppose, Christiana, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, community collaboration and democracy. I think you spoke about yeah. it, uh, Christiana Bribley, definitely is an enabler for that. Mm. It puts everyone at the same level, no hierarchy. Right. Yeah. 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 Shifting like ownership. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even actually, there's many practices with like locative media. I posted like a project that happened. Uh, it's called Hidden City. So I think there are different practices and like uh, just breaking down like uh, hierarchies in some ways and uh, coming like closer to the to the communities. That was actually our conclusion from this program too. Like uh, with all the participating museums, we all thought that uh, this was the issue with museums that we have to go closer to the audiences and not expecting the audiences uh, to visit the museums. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and Christiana, we have a question from Mumirnu on, on the chat. In Bangladesh, art museum only deals with arts and history since uh, science museums based on oh. basic science. Is there any conflict of interest? Um, and I'm bringing this up, this, this question, and also I'm going to take the chance to say that we are, we have reached the, the, the our one hour. So maybe we take this question, like with a couple two questions, and then we uh, start to go to the end. But I think who would like to address this? Christiana, you want to go for it? Yes, I think actually this is happening not only in Bangladesh, it happens uh, worldwide. Uh, most of the science museums, they deal with science and most of the art museums, they they deal with uh, art. You know, they of course, there's like some hybrid organizations that they deal with both. But uh, in, in my experience, the difference is uh, what I mentioned before, that the science museums, when they work with art, they see it more as a science communication. So they approach it from a science communication perspective, when actually the art uh, museums they want to have like an aesthetic outcome too and they see it from a different uh, uh, perspective too and that's why it's important to actually break down those boundaries and to create these hybrid spaces because then we can learn from each other and we can engage and we can exchange. Mm -hmm. This is the transdisciplinary or which is your word of preference interdisciplinarity that you were talking about right? Transdisciplinary. Yeah, good. Nice. Thank you. Um, this is great. I mean, we could be talking for a lot longer. This is a fascinating topic. We're really grateful that you could join today and uh, brought yourself, your knowledge. We are trying to make these uh, webinars a platform to get members engaged and to offer an opportunity to discuss topics that are of interest. So we're not just communicating, we are bringing change and making change happen. So there will be more coming soon. And if you have any suggestions or yourself would like to speak, please reach out. This is a very open platform. And I want to thank uh, Christiana also for her generosity of sharing her uh, research with us and and Bell, Lavrati, Deborah, and Luis for putting everything together, and uh, we hope that we have more opportunities to uh, see you and and keep talking in this uh, manifesto for museums action. And uh, we have to see each other also in the hybrid space, whether that's you know physical and virtual. Maybe the next time we will do a avatar party and we can have some online dancing because. We should do, use it also for fun and engagement, right? I don't know, Christiana, you want to say any closing words or any member of the team? Cecilia um, has his hand raised. Sorry? Oh, well, we can't hear you. So he has his hand raised. So yeah. Go ahead. We can't hear you. No. Oh, it's not working. Oh, so you can the music again. Yeah. Try it again and or put something in chat box. I don't know. Yeah. I just wanted to let everybody know that we have the NPR website, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have YouTube, where we're going to post this webinar. Um, and please get in touch with us through uh, the email that I've provided. We're having a conference coming up in Paraguay on leadership and climate action. Hope you can join us there. Part of it will be virtual, but I think all the action is going to be on the ground primarily <laughs> in Paraguay, um, not far from the Iguazu Falls. So. Um, 
there's a link there. You can find out more and we'd love to have you join us. Yeah. And, and we'll have uh, a whole new series of webinars coming up for the fall <laughs> that were that are in now development stages. So we look forward to that with, too. With new energy. And new Christiana, energy. if you want to say something and uh, Belle, before we go. Yes, I just would like to thank everyone for being here. It was a pleasure like, to have these discussions. I think they are very important to uh, creating this discourse and actually continuing the dialogue after the presentation. So it was uh, my honor and pleasure to share this with you. Thank you. Thank yes. you, Christiana and Belle and Cecilia. You've worked a lot, spent a lot of time working on this presentation today. And I think it's been very intriguing a very intriguing and challenging subject. And we've had some good discussion today that I certainly, we want to explore some more. Thank you. Yeah. Have a lovely I, evening, I, everyone. I think this is really the tip, tip toe and, you know, it's tip toeing and it's, it's just the beginning yeah. of what the conversation. Just the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. Yes, thank you for joining, Josefina and all the family. Just to let you know other events, other events. And I will bring more and more students because, again, this is something we are working a lot around. So, and they are the fresh mind. And uh, so absolutely, please let me know. Thank we you will. Thank you, all the students. Thank you, everyone. Thank bye. you. Bye, Nancy. Bye. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, bye. <laughs>